Okay, here are some more questions. Can you speak on finding the right yoga teacher for one who wants to attain enlightenment? Also, can you speak about the importance of diet and what one should be eating in their efforts to awaken? I have heard an alkaline diet is important. Can you please give me guidance on my spiritual practice? What I should be doing? What I should be avoiding? And an additional question from someone else. I would like to hear more on the question regarding moment-to-moment -moment conscious experience while going about householder life. Oof, it's very hot today here. It's a rainy season, but it's still very, very hot. The right yoga teacher for the one who wants to attain enlightenment. Well, it's a kind of um, paradoxical, but every teacher is the right teacher. And I'll explain why. Because that actual notion of having the right teacher, for instance, in the Orient is seen as inseparable from one's individual karma, from one's individual destiny. We get the teacher we deserve in life. Yes, we get exact guru uh, that we need at any given moment to guide us, even if that means to go on the loop or even going around the circles for a while. All that is part of our journey. All this process is inseparable from um, the paying out, so to speak, or re-experiencing what we once put out. You know, the, the notion of karma. So the right teacher, the right teacher, could be the wrong teacher, or the wrong teacher could be the right teacher in disguise. And if you understand that, you know, and not to make it too complicated, is that it is not so much about the teacher, but one's capacity to learn, one's desire and one's willingness to learn. Now, on a more practical level, of course, I do agree, there has to be, there has to be a symbiotic relationship, there has to be um, a flow of energy in between, and for that, it's very important to have the teacher who, whose very being resonates with our own self. You know, the right teacher is the one with whom you feel an affinity, as simple as that. Not that you like him or her for the looks, for what they talk, you know, for how many disciples or how many students and followers they attract. All these are wrong reasons. Sometimes people jump into the, like, let's say, um, a big following, you know, like, the, because, okay, this teacher has millions of followers. You know, so and so in India is like commands such tremendous respect. You know, he is even being watched by political parties because he's so so influential. But that's not the reason, you know, to to follow that teacher. Your teacher could be a local gardener, you know, uh, who maybe in disguise of a gardener is a profound Zen master and he may have only five disciples, five students, and they're not even his followers because in that tradition, you know, they don't care whether you follow him with flowers and, and you know, oblations, you know, he might even sometimes give you a little, what have you, uh, a slap, a physical slap, you know, a mental slap that may hurt for a while, you know, because that's the, you know, <laughs> the teaching 
And I'm not trying to be funny here, I'm being dead serious. This is all different ways of finding the right teacher. The right teacher is with whom you resonate on the heart level. Soon as someone speaks, soon as someone's there, and you feel that presence, you feel that affinity with, you know, then you should go and give it a try. And don't forget to question thoroughly whoever you want to make into your teacher. Because when the process of transmission starts, when the process of, let's say, exchange of energy starts, it's very bad to start questioning your teacher. You should question yourself, but not your teacher. Once you've surrendered, once you've decided that I want to be with this person, the questioning should finish there and then. That's why traditionally, you know, the guru chill relationship in India was given a tremendous importance, you know. Both were testing each other. There was this dance, there was this amazing um, dialogue, there was this, you know, before one accepts the other. You have to make sure that the teacher is up to your level of understanding, up to your level of feeling, up to your level of, of, of comprehension. And you have to have that relationship, that trust. So that are the prerequisites of the right teacher. And that prerequisite is not the same for everyone. So cannot be taken as a recipe. You know, this guy is good for me, so he then will be good for you. It is not true. They are Jagat Gurus, of, co of course. They are great masters whose presence is so all-encompassing that, it, you know, they basically encompass the whole <laughs> creation, if you will. So, you know, like, there is almost everything for everyone. But they are rarity. So, you know, they are, they are very rare. So the importance of diet to awaken and the alkaline diet is it important and how important that is well this is you know a little touched subject up on in uh, a lot of modern contemporary new age uh, philosophies and you know, new age uh, teaching and I am um, trying to give as much covering as I can as much time as uh, as much you know covering as the time allows me because food is paramount. We are what we eat. It's an ancient proverb and it's absolutely true. All our cells are being renewed, rejuvenated and made of the stuff that we eat. Including our brain cells, our lung cells and, and the stuff of, you know, what makes our heart vibrate and pound with blood. So to say that it, it's secondary or unimportant, it's a big, big, and it's a basically biased um, attitude which is the result of the time we live in, because the attitude towards food has been completely, completely um, distorted, you know, taken out of proportion, taken out of the context, and, you know, we eat the wrong food at the wrong time of the day for the wrong reason, in wrong company and what have you. You know, the whole act of eating, partaking food is being so dead divinized, so trivialized, so brought to the level of the habit that I think monkeys eat with much greater awareness than ourselves. And I'm observing monkeys here in Costa Rica every day, you know. When monkey is not hungry, it's not going to eat. You know, it's not like the bread dogs who will eat until they pop. You know, because the instincts have been nihilated in them through years of breeding. But in wildlife, a creature will eat only when it is hungry. It will search for food carefully. One day they eat on that tree only because, the, let's say, certain shoots came out on that tree. Then they will move to another area altogether, although the similar tree is right next to it. Why would they move? A whole colony of them will just move. Okay, not to move you away too much from the subject, but there has to be the same level of attunement. You, we have to know 
what our body needs. And in order to know what our body needs, we first have to purify this body. So the real, real um, acuity of the senses, of the desire to eat certain food, so the cravings are readjusted not to our obsessions and not to our sort of, you know, not the, the, the craving is not bound to the, let's say, habitation to certain food, which is usually, usually not good for us. And we know it, yet we cannot cut that, you know, um, attachment to that food, you know. In order for the new cravings to arrive, you have to go through the process of uh, gradual purification of the body. And in my view, Ayurveda is one of the best tools. You know, Ayurveda is one of the best sciences which uh, systematically gives that uh, explanation of, you know, of your own body, of your own constitution, of your own physiology, and how that corresponds to the environment, to where you live, to everything, you know, and how you know, certain food is good for you, a certain food is life-promoting, and certain food is simply um, life-depriving, you know, because food and life are synonymous. And we should eat food which is imbibed with as much life as possible. So we should eat live food, not dead food. We should eat food which is vibrating, still on that primordial level where all the nutrients and the intelligence, the inherent intelligence of nature is still present. But I cannot cover what food, you know. We have to, each of us, go and find out for ourselves. The sources are there. It's the time when all this information is available. Look through books, you know. Perhaps we should create a special link, you know, a page in our website where we should like, list some notable and reputable authors. And going to the question of the alkaline, it is absolutely true. Our bodies are increasingly, increasingly acidic. And one of the aims of yoga, let's say, through the science of pranayama, through the science of meditation, is to de-oxidize our body. Our body has to become basically more alkal alkaloid rather than acidic. Acidity creates conditions for the disease, gradual decay, and death. Okay, someone may say, oh, who cares, you know, I'm Brahman, you know, I'm absolute, this is Maya, this body can die, I don't care. Yes, <laughs> there's certain truth to that, but it's only very primitive truth, very two-dimensional, it's not all-encompassing, because Self-realization can only take place in this very body, in this very vehicle. It cannot take place once this body is being dropped. And this body, when it's dropped, is not necessarily, not necessarily guaranteed that when the body is being abandoned, that the soul is incarnating into another human body. Or it may incarnate into another human body, for instance, but the circumstances of the karma for that human body will not be favorable for any spiritual practice. You may have to, you know, fight for your survival. You may have to fight for your, um, you know, daily bread, what have you, you know. It's just an example. I remember, for instance, that one uh, doctor, I forgot his name, Back in the early 20th century, in his lectures in the 30s, when he was giving a report on uh, how to fight cancer, basically what he stated is that in all cases of cancer, the, there is a high level of acidity in the pH. So our pH has acidity, and that is one of the main causes of cancer. Because this, you know, the acidic environment creates the possibility for any form of decay to take place on any level. And that in itself affects the mind because the relationship between mind and body is one of the least understood, the least explored in the contemporary spirituality. We're too easy 
uh, brush off the body as something you know like and we concentrate on the mind only and the gap goes even wider because that's what western civilization has been for a very long time it was dissected right here the mind and the body before it was done in the name of the science logic and reason now it's done in the name of spirituality but the result is the same until until we understand that they are inseparable one is the reflection of the other and and one does not exist without the other mind cannot exist without the body and body cannot exist without the mind so yes alkaline died alkaline died and practices that develop develop alkaline promote alkaline reactions in the body are contributing to the process whereby we could experience gradual gradual transformation for instance during meditation our body naturally naturally becomes more alkaline it is very well known and what food is alkaline you know and promotes alkaline reactions in the body and what food is acidic again this has to be uh, addressed uh, through different um, forms of communication you know because it's a very big subject and you know we simply would not have enough time to list all the food you know in groups and what have you this is a separate subject so could you please give me guidance on my spiritual practice what I should be doing what I should be avoiding This is like, you know, it's not that easy. One has to be familiar with the other in order to be able to give such advice. In this particular case, I need to know the person who is asking this question. You know, and there has to be some kind of dialogue, there has to be some kind of exchange of information or energy in order to understand what this particular person needs at any particular moment in time because there is the saying that you know what is ambrosia for one you know could be poison for another you know and degree and proportion of you know of poison and ambrosia you know it's like very 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 varied so we have to uh, apply some kind of uh, intelligent approach here. So this, you know, the, in order to give guidance in spiritual practice, there has to be an immediate contact. It cannot be given like that. Otherwise, you know, otherwise the spirituality would become um, a, a purely intellectual enterprise you know everything could be put on the internet or put into books and there is no need for that direct relationship you know, this, I hope this is uh, quite obvious and the final question that comes from uh, another person I would like to hear more on the question regarding moment to moment consciousness experience while going about household life I'm sorry about the cicada we could just could hear that uh, a loud, loud cicadas in the background. So I'll try to speak directly into the camera so that uh, uh, we don't. Uh, yeah, okay. She understood. <laughs> she, he, I don't know. It's just like, you know, because they're all mating now. This is the mating season and cicadas are busy at it. This question is, you know, moment-to-moment -moment experience while going through the about household life I don't even know how to answer it because and uh, this it's just a you know 
life as normal, as usual. You know, get excited, you know, get tired, you know, get more ups and downs, the same thing. You know, certain things need to be done, you know, because in a household we have small kids, and I'm looking after my old mother, there's a lot of things to be done all the time, you know, and uh, all these, you know, feeding routines, you know, breakfast, lunch and dinner as usual, you know, there's outings, you know. Um, but what happens is that, I understand the question comes from what's the difference of all these experiences in the different state of consciousness, let's say in a qualitatively higher state of consciousness and the qualitatively higher state of awareness. I would try to answer it in the practical way. It doesn't really matter what level of awareness or what level of consciousness individual reaches. The body still takes its way. For instance, uh, if I am asleep systematically and the nervous system becomes overloaded with experience, I just need to rest, you know, and then everything is fine. But if you don't, then it doesn't matter whether you, you know, the bliss of the self is there. But, you know, can the body infinitely be loaded from the, all this, let's say, bliss of the self and the experiences that the householder's life is full with or filled with? So this is the question, is that you still has, have to take care of the body. I still have to take care of the body. I still have to feed it. I still have to give it rest. I love nothing more than sitting in silence from time to time, you know, when there is a chance to do that. And, um, of course, working with the others is a tremendous um, joy. It is tremendously, tremendously rewarding process because there is an exchange of energy, so uh, the tiredness has a very different qualitatively, uh, you know, it has a very different quality to it. You know, it's like when you do something which you love doing, then you feel this, oh, that was uh, nice, I'm tired, but I feel good, you know. So, the moment to moment experiences, you know, it's like very hard to di differentiate anymore. Everything is as valid as anything else. And in that flow, in that flow, you know, you you just do what needs to be done, you know. So the, there is no identification, you know. One moment I'm father, one moment I'm son, one moment I'm teacher, one moment I'm a gardener, one moment I'm a cook, one moment I'm washing up the dishes, you know. And then I'm the driver, and then I'm, you know, then I'm the one who's going to sleep. <laughs> so, I don't know if that helps. <laughs>